everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Rec My BS. Okay, so today I come to you feeling renewed, really just everything makes sense now in my life and uh, February. Well, January was a great reading month for me in terms of quantity. I read one of the best books ever written and I've read some of the worst books ever written. So it's been very up and down. So let's begin. I read 15-ish books. You'll see what I'm talking about. And I'm filming this on the 30th and I still have two more days to go and I expect to finish a book I'm reading. Okay, so the first book I picked up was 13 Reasons Why. This book is about Hannah Baker, a girl who killed herself and who sends a bunch of tapes to all these people who she blames for her suicide which is very ridiculous. Her voice was very annoying and I get why so many people hate this book. It's, it's very unrealistic. But I still gave it a 3.5 just because Clay's voice, who is the boy who gets the tapes and narrates the story, is so realistic and it's so heartfelt and it made me cry because I had never heard that side before. It was very close to home but if I had to be objective, yes, this is not a very good book. So I did do you know a real review of this and I will leave the link up here. Then I read Nocturne which is I didn't really read it because it's sort of like an album book it's just mostly illustrations but I, I gave it five out of five because just in those few words and those illustrations about a night in New York in the 50s I think it was. We just They were so beautiful and the illustrations were so accomplished. I give it 5 out of 5. Then I read a Chilean book called uh, Joven Dialogada which is like young and crazy which was honestly shade. I gave it like 2. There is a movie if you want to check it out. It won Best Screenplay at Sundance 2012 so yeah. yeah I only mention this because you know I, I want to be real and tell you all that I read. Then I read this short little book called uh, The Velvet Underground and Nico by Joe Harvard and uh, yeah it was very good. The only thing I didn't like is that it got rambly. Like why are you talking about that? Is it important? I still give it like a 3 or 3.5 out of 5. Oh! Then I read The Character of Rain. I know it doesn't say that here because this edition is in Spanish and I will do a review of this but just know that this is so great so okay so this book is written by Emily Nottom and it's called the character of rain and it's about a baby who does nothing literally it does nothing and it proclaims itself God like I am God and people have to serve me oh this book was amazing as I said I will do a full review of this but just so you know you should check it out because it's Amazing. Of course I gave it a 5 out of 5, I thought that was clear, but I did say it. Then I read 84 Charing Crossroads, and Helen Hubs was like a screenwriter, but not a very successful one, I, I gathered, and these are letters that she sent to a used bookstore on London, I think it was. It's very humane. Well, it's it's not fiction. She had a very quirky persona. She, she was very weird, but in a good way, I feel, maybe. That's it. It's short. You read it in a day. You know, it, it's good. Okay, then I read... I don't remember what. Wait a minute. Oh... So this book is going straight to New York and I'm going to sell it and even if they give me a cent for it, I don't care, I just don't want it and I'm going to go to a place where they buy books for store credit. <sighs> Boyproof by Cecil Castellucci. This was actually recommended by John Green, which wasn't why I picked it up, but it was recommended because a female, a strong female character. No, this book, I actually think it might be the worst book I've ever read, honestly. But it's about a girl who is boyproof. But it's not boyproof because she wants to, it's because she, everyone tells her she's ugly and she lives in California and her parents are neglect to meet this guy who of course is freaking perfect and oh it's just it's so badly written it's so empty and hollow and shallow i don't think i've read something worse than this you don't read it don't it's Ugh. That's why I want to get rid of it. Then I read On the Country of White Memory, which is not translated into English, which is weird because it's a French book. It's a world with animals, very mouse-like, and he doesn't remember anything. And it's very predictable, I will say that, but it's genius. They just, the illustrations are 
I'm moving, I just remember them and I got it from the library but I want to buy it because every time you look at them you feel so sad but it's, it moves something inside you and so I recommend this so much uh, if you know French please get this book because it's great I read it in Spanish of course, I don't know French but then I read The Night of the Seven Kingdoms which is the prequel to A Game of Thrones or actually the whole A Song of Ice and Fire series it was very good, it tells the tales of A and Dunk and uh, Dunk is like a poor knight who tries to make a living, like honestly, and he wants to be a good knight. And it's very, how could I say this, classic. And I like that about George R. R. Martin, that his novels feel really like they could have been written back then, like back at the time of medieval literature. How he uses language, how he portrays the traditions, it's really well researched. I gave this a 4 out of 5, it wasn't perfect, it was lacking a little more substance and the plot twists were kind of okay I knew that was going to happen but it's still very very good very entertaining if you like a medieval literature you will like this because it's really much like a modern version of that also you don't need to have read A Song of Ice and Fire to get it but there are a lot of jokes and characteristics of each lineage that you only get if you've read like or have watched the series but it's not necessary you still will get it and will get the enjoyment out of it. Then I read one of my favorite young adult novels of all time and that is Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. Okay so this book is about Aristotle, a 15 year old I think when he starts or a 17 year old, whatever, who doesn't really know what's what, he doesn't really have anything in life that excites him. He's very much every teenager who isn't into partying but isn't like a nerd either. He meets Dante one summer and Dante is a guy who's excited about life. The interesting thing is that I think you can, I feel like a little bit of both. None of these characters is exactly me but I can relate to them. It's a very universal feeling and it's so well done, well crafted. The words are precise, exact, 5 out of 5, of course, of course. After that I read The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. I know I still haven't read Gone Girl. I will get to that eventually. Actually, I lent that book to a friend. It was good. I loved the story. I loved the plot. It's about this woman whose mother was a beggar and then she realized she could do that better so she ran away and started her own business as a beggar. Then she gave hand jobs and then she had to become a psychic because her hand was having carpal tunnel syndrome. This was a short story that first appeared in a compilation. Releasing it as a book though, I think it could have been added a little bit. I think it, it, it doesn't hold up this is a short book as much. As a book, it lacks description, setting. I think it's missing like feelings to set the tone and to be more eerie, to be more like, oh, what's it doing to me? Still, I like this. This is very freaky. I love the ending, but I would have liked more description, more development. I get a 3.5 out of 5. Then I read this book, which is, uh, it's not translated, it's a Mexican book about quotes, about literature, about what is writing, what is reading, and basically throws a lot of shades to the publishing industry and bestseller industry. It was okay, the quotes sometimes were like, nah, but I did get a lot of good quotes, so I give it a 3 out of 5. Then. I read The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boys and Other Stories and this book by Tim Burton. It's a series of poems and illustrations all done by him and oh. If you love Tim Burton, of course you will love this, but if you like twisted things, well, if you like to see things, then how can you not like Tim Burton? I mean, I know, Dark Shadows and Alice, I know, I know, but come on. This is so twisted like I knew it was going to be dark and twisted but it was even darker than I expected and I was so happy I just loved this <sighs> okay and then we go to the girl on the train aquí dice la chica en el tren I read it in Spanish I got it out from the library I didn't want to spend money on this book it I thought it 
wouldn't be worth it and it wasn't. I gave it a 2.5 just because I thought Rachel's character was very interesting. People say it's the next Gone Girl, I can't compare it because I haven't read Gone Girl. But Paula Hawkins is not Gillian Flynn, guys. I mean, Gillian Flynn has an act. Even if her endings are kind of... Mm, she has an act for situations and characters. Rachel is a great character and she should have narrated everything but somehow we get two other women into this and that's just the easy road easier for the reader, easier, easier for the writer also very predictable the beginning, 100 pages, great very entertaining, you want to keep reading after that, mm, crush I don't know, I wouldn't recommend this for that, I forgot I read Slate House by David Mitchell this book started out like great I thought this is so top notch 5 out of 5 immediately and then kind of like oh. Okay, so this book is about a house. <laughs> it's about a house that is hidden and people get lost in it and never come out. First part is very shocking and it has a great twist from five different narrators because it happens every nine years. It started in 1979, it was intriguing, although it kind of gave it away at the end of that part, like, okay, I know what this is now, I, I can go move on with my life. And then it went on and on and on. Terrible. The ending, I think, it's one of the worst endings for a good book that I have ever read. The writing style, though, it's very, very good. The voices are all very different and you can tell they are from different times. I like that. The way also the thing that's happening in the house is explained is so stupid, but really, I was like, yeah, right. This part was so good and then it was like so disappointed. Uh, then, of course, I made progress with A Game of Thrones. Still have like a hundred pages left. Um, I'm going to finish it this weekend. This book is just great. I don't know what to say about it. It's a great story. It's a great world. There are great characters. You, this is a book you enjoy. I am going to upload a whole review of this when I finish it, but maybe that will be when I come back. I don't know, but yes, I love it. So this was my January wrap up. I am so looking forward to talking to you about all these things I have on my head. Next video, I promise. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe if you want to check out the Spanish channel, the link is up here. If you want to check out my Facebook page, the link is down below. And that's it, please have a very nice life and see you next time. I, I, I like that about John Green's. Also, Dante's version is coming out because Aristotle is the narrator of this. Mm, I hate when they do that because it's only for like the money, doesn't have any like creative intention. But I still read it because it's Dante. But I hope it's good. It, it, I hope it doesn't ruin this for me because I love it. And it's so hard that I love YA novels. So I, I hate when that happens. I hate people who take the easy road into writing. Writing is not easy. Writing is a, it's a feat, and you have to find the best way of saying what you want to say. So yeah, because it really the ending was like the. Oh, it was like, okay, I have this great potential of a novel, let me ruin it with this freaking ending. I hated it. Sorry, I hated the ending.